All right, let's check how this is doing. Yeah, it's fine. Oh, let's actually check the the farm. That's not what I wanted. So there is one of the negatives about having the bag in the second hand. As you noticed, when I climbed that fence, we left it on the ground. That'll happen to anything that is in your off hand that isn't also in your main hand when you climb over stuff. Is you'll just you'll drop it wherever it is. Now we're gonna hydrate, I can do that. I have no idea why I got in that vehicle. Oh, hold up a second. I forgot we have an extra bag here. Sure. Well, first let's take this bag, unequip it, put it here. Um, I'm going to dump that in the passenger seat for just right now for organizational purposes. It's also pro tip. You'll notice this only carries 26 weight. I just put 31 weight in. It's just the way seats are. As long as it's an, a singular item, you can put one item in that goes beyond the capacity of the seat. Uh, I do believe that is a deliberate choice. I couldn't tell you why or anything else, but it allows you to do stuff like put generators and antique stoves and that in your passenger seat, even though technically you shouldn't have the room for it. But I forgot we did find an extra large bag and that had stuff in it. So we want to put that stuff somewhere. Put the shotgun shells away. And I just put it up there because I already have three or yeah, I got two large bags with me. I've got two more in there and I got one over there. Like I really don't need large bags anymore. But, you know, large bag. I mean, it's it's free stuff. Why, why wouldn't I take it? Is that the helicopter I hear? Is that the music? Pretty sure it's the music. We'll eat some fish to help with our nerves. I'm going to keep the fish bag in the other seat of the car for right now because it is so ridiculously heavy and we'll just pull the fish from it as we need. We'll eat it aggressively because that fish is probably going to go bad before we get through it, so it's probably a total waste of the fish, honestly. I should have frozen it, but, you know, what's a little wasted fish between friends? Yeah, it's definitely not the helicopter. It would have been on top of us by now.
So I do think I'm going to go back to the plan, sort of, where what we'll do is... Nah, we'll just we'll go in the way we've been going and clear out the zombies there. We'll work our way west. When we've worked our way west through the entire riverside area and we do not see like any meaningful number of zombies like we do our lap around town, uh, we will declare it cleared. And that's that's my intent at the moment. Yep, and every time we pass through, we kill whatever zombies do show up back in the road, or near the road. The idea being, if we do that enough, we'll stop seeing them at some point. Because there are finite zombies on the map, and while they do move around, the more you clear out zombies in a general area, the less zombies there are to wander around to cause you problems. Oh, and there is cruise control in the game. It's not particularly good at letting you know. The only way you can see that it is even a thing is by putting your mouse over the miles per hour. But, um, Shift-W will speed you up by increments of 5, as well as turn on the cruise control. Shift-S will slow you down by increments of 5, and then tapping your brakes will shut off cruise control entirely. So, cruise control will absolutely save your life, because you can just set it, and you don't have to worry about accidentally driving 75 miles per hour directly into a tree. Because you can set your cruise control for 25 or whatever's appropriate. It'll just make it a lot easier for you. Let's see, Redlaw says, I hope you don't take this as weird or creepy comment, but I have been binging your stream lately. I find it informational, educational, and entertaining in addition to your work as a teacher and software engineer, in quotes, and someone who works with people with disabilities, it's very admirable. That There's nothing creepy about that. I, I thank you so much. I do appreciate that. Um, generally, I won't use the title software engineer because technically I am not an engineer. Um, I do have a lot of electrical engineering stuff, but I do not have the general cert. But I am a software developer. It's just a lot of places engineer is a protected term. Not all places, though. But yes, thank, thank you so much. Yeah, and I figured as much, just, you know, always take the time to, like, very, be very clear and transparent that's like, hey, just, just so you know, this is, this is my stance, is that I am not an engineer. Because while I don't believe the state I am in 
has as a protected term? I know I've done a lot of business in states where it is. Or I shouldn't say business, I've done work for people in states where it is. So. It doesn't matter. Titles are meaningless. That's not actually true. Titles do mean something. But not all titles are, like, particularly meaningful. Alright, give me your spear. Let's see. What words are meaningless? Says, uh, Zauberfish. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Sometimes words can be incredibly powerful. Uh, no, not really. I've done actually very little freelance work. I have done some. But, um, a lot of times when you're dealing with work, there's, a uh, different considerations you have to have for different locations. Um, you might have the company you're working for have a variety of customers you have to worry about. And so, like, even if you're not doing direct software dev with them, you do have to consider the legal implications of them also being one of the places your company is dealing with. Um, and a lot of companies don't have a single basis of operations. So that kind of stuff. So, like, the company I had worked for... Let's see, we had we had some offices in Europe, we had some offices in India, we had offices in multiple states here in the US. So it's good to just have, you know, make sure you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, not get anyone in trouble. And for the record, the India thing was not outsourcing, it was actually customers because people in India need technical training. Oh, hey, really big group of zombies. Two really big groups of zombies. Yep, and that's my exact point, Zauberfish, is there's just, what's the difference between a junior and a senior dev? Well, that depends on what company you're looking at. Uh, sometimes it's pay, sometimes it's how many years you have been specifically at that company, sometimes it's how many just generic years experience you have, sometimes it's an attempted measure of your competence, like it can be anything and everything. Like system architects, same thing. Like it's, it very much depends on the company. So when it comes to like when people when people would, you know, turn in a resume and all that, they're like, oh, you know, as a senior system dev and I don't recognize the company, I'm like, okay, you're a system dev. Like, like, I just don't care about the junior senior part because it means nothing. Just, you have, rel you know, relevant experience. Cool. That's, that's all I got. I actually mentioned that even earlier in the stream, like when someone comes in, they have a resume, they're like CEO of company, whatever. I'm like, okay, unless I recognize that company, I'm like, oh, you were the CEO of, you know, Google or Facebook or Okta or, you know, a company. I'm like, oh, that company actually had a legitimate number of people. Sure, that means something. But if you're like CEO of company you've never heard of, it's like, okay, sure. Yeah, and that's the uh, that's the thing, Killian. In some places, engineer is a protected term that very specifically means like you were in the line of like civil engineer, mechanical engineer, opto engineer, that kind of thing. And so, as a software developer, if you call yourself a software engineer, the expectation is that you have an engineering certification, which you know, as a software engineer, you you have zero reason to have that because that gets into stuff like being able to go to um, how you determine like material tolerances, thermal dynamics, that kind of stuff. And unless you're doing software specific for like manufacturing and that where that might be relevant, you have no need to know that. 
and that's the catch. So many engineering, like so many places to call yourself an engineer, you have to have that loose general engineering that even if you're not a civil engineer, you have enough competence that if you got into a position as a civil engineer, you would at least be able to have some level of success. Hey, thank you for the follow, Oval Rust. Welcome to the stream. But yeah, in IT, it's super duper loose. It, it kind of comes out, there was like, for a hot minute, it was everyone was trying to call themselves whatever engineer. So you'd have like, sanitation engineer for people who are like, garbage men and everything. And I actually don't really have a strong opinion on that one way or the other. But it was just like, okay, but people actually do have legal protections for their title and everything. Because like doctor, it's a very specific thing. And this is making it complicated. And so a product out of that was they began enforcing all these rules that you couldn't call yourself an engineer unless you were an engineer. Like an actual certified engineer. And then people did come up with the argument of saying, hey, you know what? Software, you know, software developers do stuff that's very similar to the engineering, like engineering, you know, you're presented a problem, you come up with a, uh, like you plan a solution, you implement the solution, um, you adjust your plan accordingly, and blah blah blah, it's like, alright, yes, it has basic problem solving, you are correct, but like, as a civil engineer, when I put up a bridge, you know, it, it better be right. Because it's not like I can uh, I can adjust the bridge after the fact. It's it's concrete and rebar. It's it's there. Versus you know software. If I've made a mistake, as long as it's nothing super dire, you know, I can go and back in and go. Oh, we had a problem with this. Yeah, no problem. We can just rewrite this part of code, redeploy, and we're good. Not always. There's exceptions. You know, the software that launches rockets better work the first time, otherwise uh, the rocket will not be going where it's supposed to go, and bad things happen. You have a uh, rapid unscheduled disassembly. Uh, excuse me, ma'am? Ma'am, that, that was mine. I would like that back. <laughs> I'm an uncivil engineer. My bridges are very rude. You like look from the sky view of the bridge as just a big middle finger. Just, you know, the bridge's design. My company will now carry software doctor as a job title. Brilliant. Yep. Yeah, bugged infrastructure. If you think that's bad, wait till you see my overpasses. That's just how we do things here in New Jersey. Just all the crosswalk signs say, hey, he's walking here. Use guys. He's walking over here. I don't actually know a Jersey accent, so I'm probably being incredibly offensive, and I apologize. But my uninformed self, that's what I want to picture in my head for, like, not, not the typical person in Jersey. Like, everyone has that local, you know, that local, uh, it's not dialect. Like, that local way of speaking that, you know, is kind of niche in just certain parts of that area they get known for. And you're just like, no. Not we don't we don't all do that. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, I, I understand. Uh, beta blockers, I don't hardly use them, but sure, they're on the ground, I'm taking them. Like, down here in Florida, there's not too many. Like, you hear, like, the Florida Man thing, which, for the record, the reason why you hear Florida Man, that Floridians do all sorts of absolutely stupid stuff, and they get in trouble for it. Um, that's actually a weirdly progressive reason. Uh, we have laws we are, that are referred to as the Sunshine Laws here in Florida. That basically the idea is all government records that don't have a very specific reason to be, like, top secret or otherwise redacted kind of thing are public record and as such that includes police reports so when you have a very slow news week and you're like what the hell do we cover this you just pull up you know good old law enforcement and go let's start looking through uh what reports have gone through the police and look for the most ridiculous thing we can find and then you run a story on it and so is born florida man because people do incredibly stupid stuff everywhere. We just have a whole lot of people and open records. I guess it's also partly not progressive because, you know, frankly, who did what is no one's business unless it's relevant for specific things like you know, figuring out if a person's committed some kind of fraud or is accused of committing some type of fraud before you make them in charge of your company's finances. You get the idea. That said, some of the, uh, the tropes that are Floridian so far as stuff is, um, referring to all distances in minutes, not miles. That is a very Floridian thing to do because miles are meaningless to us because of the way our traffic is um, and then referring to all soda as coke so you're like if you want a soda you go hey I want a coke what kind? Sprite or Mountain Dew at which point you just kind of want to punch your brain going, but that's not any kind of Coke. One, it's a Pepsi product. Two, it's not a cola, let alone is it a, like, Diet Coke or Coke or anything like that. Like, you can have that whole pop or soda argument, but Coke is objectively wrong in this situation. The whole uh, literally doesn't need to actually mean literally, it can be an intensifier. Or most, least, best, worst also can be intensifiers. And you're just like, but what, but what word means literally now? There isn't one. Unless you say like, I literally mean literally. Or like, I mean the old meaning of literally. Or I mean, like, literally as an actually. Or best in, there isn't another one that is as good. Yeah, I know there's a number of places that do that. But it is the thing that you'll hear people, like, they'll come from up north and then, um... Is be like, how far is that? Oh, it's about 30 minutes. And I kind of look at you like, what? I'm like, yeah, it's about 30 minutes. Like, so is it like 50 miles? Like, well, I don't, I don't have a clue how far it is, like, in actual miles. I just know it's 30 minutes. Miles mean nothing with traffic. Like, I can stare at a building two feet away from me, but if tra traffic is gridlocked and I can't actually get my vehicle there, it doesn't matter where it is. I mean, granted, in that case, you walk, but the point is, it doesn't matter if it's one mile or 50 miles if, you know, both take half an hour. Yeah, so we don't have to worry about that public transportation thing in Florida because we suck at it. 
and we have almost none of it. We've got buses that are pretty, pretty awful to borderline tolerable for the people riding on it. And we've recently, just recently, gotten a train. Oh, like one, one, one set of trains. Um, they don't visit 99% of the, like, cities. So when it comes to public transportation in Florida, it has been excruciatingly hostile towards public transportation, which to me is incredibly frustrating. Because they have horrible traffic problems, and almost any civil engineer will tell you, well, one of the ways you deal with having ridiculous traffic problems is some means of public transportation to draw as many vehicles off the road as possible. Like, if, if I can potentially put in a train and reduce the load of cars on the road by like 10-15%, that's just a win. You know, I've, I've just eliminated 10-15% to of traffic. Like, I will say, I was extremely impressed with the, uh, I think it was a light rail that they had in, uh, Portland and Seattle. Like, I, I visit up there, I mean, it's been, you know, since pre-pandemic, but there was lots of conferences that I was always invited to up in that area because there's a pretty big tech hub up there. And every time I use that light rail, you know, certainly it wasn't like I'm having the greatest experience of my life or anything, but, you know, it almost always arrived in time, you know, it was generally you know, fairly well handled. You didn't have to go through a big hassle to use it. Like, I, I generally was impressed by it. And honestly, the one that goes in uh, Salt Lake City, Utah is not bad either. You run to some, how should I say, interesting people on it, you know. Like, there's definitely some people who were, uh, were having a pretty good time on something I'm almost certain was not legal but you know they weren't they weren't hurting anyone so whatever they were just yelling at the wall like you do I guess I mean probably fair I don't know what that wall did I still think for like someone who is clearly intoxicated on something for just ridiculous stuff was visiting downtown Orlando at one point and just this guy was just yelling about how jaywalking laws are keeping the man down and it was an oppression thing and I'm just kind of sitting there going what is it like if we can like I can certainly get into a long list of things that are laws that kind of you know really are harmful to people in tough situations but jaywalking is the line like that's that's the uh, the place you want to put your spear down this say this is the line you know this this is the thing and i'm just like huh i can think of stuff so much worse than jaywalking And that dude was, like, real adamant that jaywalking was, like, the worst thing ever the laws about it. Which I also find fascinating because people jaywalk everywhere in Orlando. And I've never once heard of it. Like, never heard once anything. Yeah, what could be worse than jaywalking? Oh, yeah. No, it was this, this person was definitely on something. Like, these, these were not the discussions of a person with a sound mind in the moment. Like, nor was a person, like, particularly poorly off or anything. This person 
clearly had money to them. They were just either drunk or high or something was going on. Or hell, I shouldn't be judgy. Maybe they had new medication to deal with like chronic pain or something and just were not reacting well to it. But whatever was going on, whatever they were on, they needed to not be on it. Because they were not a functional human being in that moment. We're fighting quite a few more zombies this return trip than, or this trip back out here than I was anticipating. Nothing like alarming that I'm like, oh no, we were not making progress. Like we're definitely less than previous trips. But it's like, oh, clearly there's like a migration triggered or something. Um, I do believe they can cross the cell. Like, I don't know the exact mechanics behind it. I know zombies can end up getting from one cell to another. I just don't know if that's migrations themselves, redistributions. There's, like, different mechanics in play, and I don't know which ones are responsible for what. But yeah, you can absolutely get zombies leaving one area and going to another area. Now, how far they can go, all that kind of stuff, that I don't have the answers to, unfortunately. Just try to tone down the volume a little bit on that radio so far as the zombies being able to hear us. Cause it does seem like we're going to be arriving just plenty late at night. So 
I would like to get into this house without too much of an event. Uh, then we'll sleep here. We'll do the lap around these right houses. Go down the main street. Kill any zombies we see. We just don't see anymore. That's not the house I was looking for. That's fine. Which house was the one you're staying in? It's not that one. Oh, I think it's up one street. Okay. Yeah, it's this house. And I'm just staying at this house specifically because we've been through enough times that we know at least the house itself is sound. Also, is in the house we were staying in. That's fine. Your garage sound? That's all I care about. If I can park my car in your garage, good enough for me. This is dangerous. I really don't like playing inside if I don't have to. One second, I got something in my eye. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we'll pull our car in there and that's where we'll sleep.
Come out here. I don't want to fight you in there. We started to sleep, and one of the zombies broke down a door at the exact second we went to sleep, so we woke up again. So I gotta wait a moment before we can sleep again. Hold up, shovel, gimme. The problem is, I don't want to run around and sleep there. can't sleep. I'm not wandering around in there in the dark. I'm pretty sure they're upstairs. Super annoying that we can't go back to sleep right now. <laughs> 